Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident and welcome to our grade 11 revision and well most of the time I deal with mathematics especially when it comes to grade 11, grade 10s but today I thought of dropping something for you and this is physical science for grade 11 and the topic here being chemistry is revision uh, for the exam as you guys are preparing for your exam so I just went through my comments and I just saw a few people now starting to request something to do with physical science um, it was just mixed reactions where some were asking for paper one which is physics and some were asking for paper two but I just looked at the time and without knowing when you guys are writing I thought chemistry was more making sense because already exams have started so you might find that most of you have already written their physics but now when it comes to chemistry is uh, one of the subjects or one of the topics or one of the I don't know what to call it that I'll say you are in the right direction because this is my expertise it is my weakness in the sense that it's the area that I love the most also now, um, as I say to you guys, I'm going to just focus on a certain section here because I was doing this in one sitting and I thought it will help. I didn't look at the whole paper, but I chose to look at part of this paper. So what is part of this paper? Um, I'm not going to go through the instructions. It's up to you to go through these instructions. It's just something quick, 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 because as I say, it wasn't the focus that I was expecting in this uh, exam time, but you know, I told you that this channel is made with you in mind and if you bring me some comments and something that I feel like look guys let me quickly drop you something it is then such that I bring such questions so you can look at whatever comes here and here and then there is you know your grade 11 start with multiple choice so there are certain sections that I chose okay I'm going to for interest sake i'm not going to look at question 1.1 1.2 let's leave it out 1.3 let's leave it out because i also didn't do it in the structured questions or long answer questions and i also didn't do 1.4 1.5 1.6 uh, on the charles laws gay lussac laws i didn't do that and let's start from 1.7 so let's say uh, the whole paper started from 1.7 and you will see also on the structured questions it will be 1.7 now let me put some uh, simple things here look guys I'm not going to do this video in actually I'm doing this video in one sitting so it will be more than 24 minutes remember this channel is called 24 minute lessons but I'm going to break it into about two or three videos and when you're watching it then you need to be following up so it will be one sitting but broken into uh, 24 minutes or so. Why am I doing that? It's because you guys, if I bring in a video that is one and a half hours, you find someone sitting for the whole one and a half hours trying to master the whole paper. Now, it doesn't make much profit to you or much, much investment in your studying because your mind can only understand a maximum of 25 minutes before you start getting distracted. So that's why these videos are meant to be in, in in 24 minutes or less because your mind can absorb up to that much anything you do for 30 minutes concentrating most of the time you'll be already distracted you would you will have decreased concentration so what you do the best thing to do is go for the first 10 minutes 15 minutes even 20 minutes or any minutes but under 25 after you've done that give yourself a break go outside do something totally different don't go on your phone if you go on your phone you are going to be still fatigued because fatigue of the mind is when you are using your mind so even when you are using your phone you are still using your mind so do something totally different go out chat with some friends and you know just move around and get some fresh air come back again maybe just a five minute break is enough to recalibrate your brain so your mind will be ready again but it will still be tired but it can still take in a little bit better it keeps on if you keep on doing those breaks you'll get better understanding than someone who says I want to sit once off and understand this thing okay 
so that's what this video will be about so i focused on certain sections of chemistry which mostly some students i feel like if you can master these calculations you will be in a better space to pass your chemistry now let's look at this for example we are looking at um this is the chemical change i think part of it let's look at 1.7 and see where it takes us it says the chemical equation uh that represents an endothermic reaction so what do we mean by the word endo remember endothermic it is a reaction that absorbs energy so it takes in energy or it absorbs it's a reaction that absorbs heat and when you say absorb heat how do you know that the reaction absorbs it is delta h must be greater than zero or delta h must be positive so you can see now if you analyze a look at delta h so this makes more sense but this one is less than so it's negative this is exothermic and then says plus heat it's exothermic so here if you produce heat as a product it means it is releasing heat so it's exothermic remember it's not absorbing if you see delta h being negative look at that sign negative it means remember i said endo means positive so it's also exo so you can see that um the answer here was a all right moving on 1.8 you'll see even the questions that i'm going to be doing will be focusing on this on this part of the section it says the correct formula for nitric acid or nitric acid uh nitric acid this is sulfuric acid this is ethanoic acid this is ammonia let me write this is sulfuric acid and this is ethanoic acid and uh, this is ammonia it's not even an acid and there is the answer D see that and D is ethanoic acid and D is nitric acid HNO3 and then 1.9 it says consider the reaction below and they gave us that reaction which sub substance is the oxidizing agent now when you talk about oxidizing agent oxidizing agent is a substance that is reduced right and the reducing agent is a substance that is oxidized so you must remember this oxidizing agent it is reduced what about a reducing agent when they say reducing agent it's a substance that is what that is oxidized now you need to also remind yourself what is to be reduced remember reduced we have got oil rig remember that to say what is oxidation this is oxidation is loss so to be oxidized is oxidation is loss of electrons remember oil rig o oxidation i is l loss of what of electrons and to be reduced meaning reduction is what is gain r i g rig reduction is gain gain of what of electrons gain of electrons now if you come now to look at this reaction we've got zinc now if it's in its natural state as solid the oxidation number is zero and then also on the other side if you look at copper the oxidation number is zero now if we look at copper sulfate now you ask yourself what is the oxidation number of copper sulfate if i can write it here to say copper sulfate is uh if you know the sulfate ions it's so 42 minus those are the sulfate ions which means copper to balance up it will be copper two plus right same thing with zinc uh sulfate it to be um uh, so for two minus and zinc will be zn two plus now look at the change uh, of these ions focus on um let's start with zinc zinc is changing from zero and then it went to zinc two plus or plus two and then copper is changing from plus two here it went to zero so as i said let's look at the definition oxidizing agent it is reduced and reduced means it gained electrons so which one gained electrons zinc was zero it became plus two remember when you're becoming positive it's loss 
while copper was plus 2 and from plus 2 it became 0 you see you are moving from positive in the number line we are moving from plus 2 and 0 you see that and then the let's say it's negative 1 do you see that you're moving towards the negative so which means copper here lost uh, um, yes copper lost so which one is the oxidizing agent copper is the oxidizing agent because it lost so what is copper sulfate copper sulfate that's where we're having this part this is copper 2 plus and then so4 2 minus and if you look at the answer here there it is b you understand why because it is the one that changed if i quickly erase this part now let's focus on copper look at it is the one that changed from if it was copper sulfate right and then it went on to become copper solid i want to focus on that what was that copper sulfate as i told you in this copper sulfate it's copper 2 plus aqueous ions if it dissolve in water it will be like this right and then if you say plus two electrons it will gain these electrons that's oxidation is gain then it will become copper uh, solid and then the oxidation number there is zero hence the answer is there all right say so which one of the following uh, 1.1.0 which one of the following reactions below will produce the salt sodium ethanoid which means it's sodium acetate now, now if you look at these reactions this is hydrochloric acid plus ethanoic acid acid plus acid well i can't say much here because it's an acid plus another acid which means some so one of them will behave as a base but this is a weak acid so let's leave it the second one ethanoic acid plus water and then this one is mainly also a bit tricky because it's not really a reaction taking place let's leave it out and then focus now on this one ethanoic acid which is an acid plus sodium hydroxide which is a base you see acid base reaction if i focus on that it will be ch3 coo remember if it's a base if it's an acid it's a proton donor the bronsten lorry theory of acid it will donate that h plus to that so it will be uh sodium plus the water they remember an acid plus a base it's a salt plus water so there is the what ethano sodium as ethanoid this is the sodium ethanoid which they called sodium acetate but if you look at d what is it this is uh carbonic acid in a way plus sodium hydroxide so i expect maybe here to become sodium carbonate uh, co3 plus water again this is not balanced though but this is what i ex expected not sodium ethanoid but it has to do with a carbonate here so there is no way it can link to ethanoid and the only answer possible there is what it is c so the answer you are, you want to get there is c remember multiple choice is not really about understanding everything but choosing the best answer and the best answer there is c all right guys as i said let's continue question number what i'm not going to look at question number two just like I, I left out some of the other questions but the coming section follow up on questions that i'm going to leave out so i wanted as i said from the comments i was getting students were really really asking about the calculations part so question three also i left it out if you want it you know what to do drop me a comment on the comment section and tell me this is really important also for you guys if um i get such comments that's when one gets motivation to sometimes bring some of these you know when you read these comments you feel your heart goes out to such a student to say okay let me do something for you and see if i can assist well i'm not a superman i'm not spider-man either my boys my boys love spider-man anyway superman meaning i can't do everything you know there are some for example subjects that I, uh, i'm not an expert so with chemistry is a different story just know that it's a different story this is me in a way so look at these look at these i also jumped all these questions until question number six we'll start from question six until the end if uh, it allows now question six 
let's do this as i'm saying i'm not really spending too much time explaining explaining but for your revision just to get something that can assist you okay another thing guys if you start hearing some background noise there's some wind today in my background so if this is being picked up apologies there's nothing i can do at the moment but let's get this done don't forget to subscribe also if you're coming for the first time subscribe 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 now let's look at this 6.1 the decompos decomposition of hydrogen peroxide in the presence of a catalyst at a standard pressure and room temperature is given by the unbalanced chemical equation below be careful of such words unbalanced see and then they give you hydrogen peroxide it gives us water plus oxygen you see it's decomposing so there is no uh, addition of any reaction because this reaction is breaking apart oxygen gas is collected and the volume is recorded over a period of time the reaction is completed at time t the results are plotted on a graph of volume versus time as shown below so they gave us this graph so you can see volume on the y-axis which is 600 cubic centimeters and versus time in seconds then it says take the molar gas volume vm as 24,45 dm cubed at room temperature and standard pressure 6.1.1 uh, balance the equation two marks okay let's come here guys how do we balance such an equation when you're balancing this equation i'll just quickly do this is hydrogen peroxide here it's um let me do this h2 just to show you something o2 it's aqueous it becomes um what did it become it became water liquid h2o which is a liquid plus oxygen which is a what which is a gas am i right all right but look at this when you're balancing this thing it mustn't just be difficult guys to balance this i'll just give you another part uh, of balancing that sometimes students struggle with when you're balancing focus on oxygen i always say oxygen is if ever there's a reaction that involves oxygen that's your focus focus on oxygen look at this i've got two oxygens here because it's o2 so there are two oxygens and then on the other side there is one oxygen plus there is two oxygens so how many oxygens do i have on the other side i've got three so i've got two on my right, uh, left hand side i've got three on my right hand side which means it that's what makes it unbalanced because hydrogen you can see that there is two hydrogens h2 and then there is two hydrogens here so the hydrogens are balanced but i say don't focus on the hydrogens focus on the oxygens what do you do since there are three but it's possible for me because this is a molecule here i can say half of o2 what is half of o2 it is equal to one o half of two see when i cancel that it's one oxygen i know you're gonna say but it's not allowed it is allowed so i can actually write it like this to say h2o2 i'll write the other equals blah 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 but just want to write it first h2o plus half of what of oxygen so now if you come back and say how many i've got two oxygens i've got one oxygen here and then here half is now one oxygen so if you say one plus one it's two if you add this so it's now balanced but you don't leave it like this why because fractions in a way are not allowed that's when you get rid of this fraction now how do you get rid of this half multiply by two but when you do that you multiply everything by two are you with me that's why you want to get rid of that half then the balanced equation will become 2h2 o2 that's two hydrogen peroxide which is aqueous that's the final answer will give us two water plus uh oxygen this is a liquid uh, as they gave us in here you just say it's l just put it that plus oxygen which is a gas it's now balanced if you want to test it or check it how many hydrogens hydrogens now it's two times two you multiply that okay two times two is four h now you see four hydrogens come here again it's four hydrogens look at oxygens oxygen you take this two and multiply by that two so two times two it's 
four oxygens on the left hand side come here this you multiply there is a one there so it's two times one which is uh, two oxygens again here it's two oxygens so two plus two it gives us what four oxygens you can see four 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 it's balanced so that is the final answer here I just wanted to do it fast without um, that but that's that now someone can be given let me give you another scenario um, just I said I wanted to do this fast but let's do this if they say you are doing a combustion reaction and you're given for example C2 and then H6 you are multiplying you are, it's combustion it's oxygen and then they say balance this chemical equation now if oxygen is completely uh, burning this C2H6 it will produce carbon dioxide plus water this is a complete combustion now if they say balance how do you balance you see we have got c2 but i said uh, the first thing i said focus on what focus on your oxygens in this case and then if you uh okay before you focus on oxygens let's do the right thing look at the carbon how many carbon it's two here you put the two to balance the carbon don't put the carbon to them that's suicidal because you are changing the whole uh, name of that molecule is no longer carbon dioxide you understand so on the right hand side you can only put before that's what you can do you can't put in between the molecules so the two becomes the two you come and balance the hydrogens there are how many there are six so you come in and say two i can't make it six except if i put a three there three times two it's six that's the first part to balance in such case as i said the last part to do is oxygen oxygen is a guy who will balance everything so look at the right hand side how many oxygen molecules it's two times two so it's four o and then three times one there it's plus three o so you've got how many oxygens you have got seven oxygens so you come here and say okay i want seven oxygens but if i say seven times two is 14 then you divide by two so that if you cancel there cancel there you've got seven O. Oh, you see what i mean when you've done that you can now write what i told you to do you start multiplying this times two uh okay let me first do this so that i don't confuse you if you write it now you'll have c2 h6 plus seven over two o two now remember when it cancels it's seven oxygens okay and then but you won't get such this is just to balance co2 plus 3h2o that's when you come back to the second part to say multiply by 2 to get rid of that 2 you multiply by 2 you multiply remember whatever you do now you do the cross you multiply by 2 you multiply by 2 and the answer now becomes 2c2h6 plus 702 will become 2 times 2 is 4CO2 plus 6H2O. You can now start to check again quickly. How many carbons? There are 2 times 2 is 4 carbons. How many hydrogens? 2 times 6. The hydrogens are 12. How many oxygens? The oxygens are, are 14 let's do the other side how many carbons here four carbons how many uh, hydrogens let's start with hydrogens six times two it's 12 hydrogens how many oxygens four times two for the oxygen here I'm getting four times two is eight O, and then here six times one because it's one there which is here it's six O. now I have to add these because it's oxygens eight plus six it's 14 oxygens sorry about this so you see that they are balanced see that so that's how you balance this anyway i was just trying to show you a quick balancing there now 